Hello and welcome to this special interview series on women in wellness, the lifestyle tweaks that will support people's journey towards better well-being. I'm Wanda Malhotra, lifestyle journalist and CEO of Crunchy Mama Box, a platform promoting conscious living. Today's interview is part of a co powerful collaboration with Authority Magazine, a medium publication that delves deep into topics that truly matter. Today, we will have the pleasure of speaking with Lauren Rudick, an international yoga teacher and the founder director of Yoga Academy International. She runs sold out yoga retreats globally and teaches yoga to NHL players and her school has risen to be one of the best yoga edu educational institutions in the world. Lauren is a leading voice and inspiration for women trying to chase dreams and live their passions, sharing her journey through Instagram. This video is a special follow-up to the written interview previously published. For a deeper dive into the complete conversation, follow my column to read the full interview. Now join us for this exclusive interview with Lauren Rudick. Hi, Lauren. Hi. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. So tell us, what advice would you give other women who are looking to follow their passions and live their dreams, even if it means deviating from the traditional path expected to them, of them? That is an amazing question. I definitely deviated from the traditional path that was expected of me. And I mean, the advice really is listen to your heart, follow your heart, listen to your intuition and believe in yourself. When the people I really loved around me questioned my decisions, questioned my path, questioned my choices, um, it was definitely really hard. And I met it with a lot of defensiveness at the beginning. But we also have to remember that our family and friends and community, they just want the best for us. And sometimes if you grow up in an environment that's different from the path you've chosen, what others might feel is best for you is maybe not what speaks to your soul or what speaks to your heart. And they just want to see you have a simple life and, a, and an easy life and a happy, joyful life. Um, and so a lot of times those naysayers, it comes from a place of fear or it comes from a place of protection rather than thinking that it's a place of love. Or sorry, rather than, um, than us thinking it's a place of love, it sometimes seems like it's a, it's a place of argumentativeness or defensiveness or, or, um, or a pushback. Um, so in my case, I definitely felt that for a long time. But nobody else is in your head, right? No one else knows exactly what you're doing. Nobody else understands the full vision or the full direction. And so, you know, if my family and friends and community, if they could see then what I saw, which is what I've built now, and what I knew was coming for me in my life, I don't think they would have anything to say about it, you know? But back then, it's, it's just like they wanted what was best for me. And, and they saw me struggle through trying to follow my passions and struggle through trying to follow my dreams and struggle to find myself and... You know, a lot of times I would hear, why don't you just come home? Why don't you just get a regular job? Why don't you come live in Canada? You know, I'd hear these things all the time and it's, it was upsetting to me. I was like, you don't believe in me or you don't believe in my dreams when really it was coming from a place of love. And I remember I had a conversation once with my dad in the car. My dad is not a very emotional man whatsoever. And I was so upset. He was, you know, I was leaving for another yoga retreat somewhere exotic and he was taking me to the airport and he was basically like, you know, you don't have to do this. You can always come back to Canada. You can always get another job. You can always go back to school and do this and that. And I said to him like, dad, why do you hate my life so much? And he goes, I don't hate your life. I just want your life to be easy. And it was in that moment that I realized like they really just want what's best for us. And they just want you to succeed and you to have a simple, and like I said, easy life. And I, I looked at him and I said, oh, like dad, no life is easy. You know, every life, no matter what path you choose, every life has pain, every life has struggle, every life has challenges, every life has failures, you know, and no life is easy. You know, what you see on the internet of my life is like a beautiful picture of what I choose to, to show you. And if I showed the world my struggles and failures constantly, I would have no job, you know? People want a success story also, and they want to see beautiful things, and that's part of what inspires them to travel or what inspires people to come on my yoga retreats is, you know, seeing what's possible. Sure. I share some of the struggles, but if I shared, you know, every failure along the way, no one would care. They would just think I'm complaining, you know? Um, and so I, I think going back to your question, like when we meet with naysayers, you know, think to yourself, like, is it coming from a place of love or and fear 
which it was in my case, like it was just coming from a place of love. I love you. I want your life to be easy and fear. I'm afraid if you choose this path, your life is going to be full of misery and difficulty and hardship. Um, or is it really coming from a place of, of unsupportiveness? And if it's coming from a place of unsupportiveness, then sometimes we do need to cut people out of our lives. Sometimes we do need to say, you know, no, thank you. This relationship is no longer serving me in a kind way um, and move forward and surround yourself with people who do love you and do support you and do understand your vision and your dreams and want to want to help you get there. Um, I will say like today, my friends and family are so supportive of me and what I do in my career. Um, but I've also had the fortune of, of having a lot of recognition. You know, I was featured in Women's Health Magazine. I've been featured in all kinds of news articles and TV shows, et cetera. And, and so now, you know, I have this sort of public recognition of, of what I'm doing. And I have this beautiful school that is a physical entity that you can see. Um, and so now, like, there's no pushback anymore. Just the question from my family and friends used to be like, when are you coming home? When I would go to leave for a yoga retreat or a yoga teacher training. And now the question has become, when's your next trip? And that is support, you know? And so what do you do for the naysayers? Well, ask yourself, are they, are they coming from a place of love and support or are they coming from a place of fear or are they actually just really not, sorry, are they coming from a place of love and a place of fear or are they just really not supportive of your goals and dreams? And if they're not supportive, then have a conversation and maybe walk away. But if it's just out of fear and out of love, you know, you can really open up a dialogue and say, this is what my heart and my soul is calling me to do. This is what makes me most happy. This is what helps me shine my light in the world. And, and I'm okay with the failures and the lessons and the challenges that come along with it. And once I have explained that to the people I love, you know, they have nothing to say. And my sister once said to me something that really stuck. She's so wise. Years and years ago, I was crying about how I felt unsupported by my family. And she said, you know, Lauren, happiness is the best defense. When you show up and you're happy and you share your life from a place of joy, people are just going to be happy for you. You know, and that's something that I've learned too is, sure, I will share some of my struggles with the people I love or with the naysayers, but I, I mostly share the successes and the joys. And I send my family home pictures of me at work and doing what I do and in beautiful places. And that has also really helped um, educate the people I love and the people who were formerly fearful into a place of just full support and full love. That's beautiful. And so important for us to keep in mind when we're going through a change of careers, life change. It's that, Those are wise words. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. So, You've traveled extensively and taught yoga in various parts of the world. How has cultural diversity and exposure to different lifestyles influenced your approach to yoga and wellness? Oh, that is a really great question. I have to say traveling is the best education I've ever gotten. I learn so much everywhere I go. One thing I'm pretty cognizant of is being culturally sensitive and culturally appropriate you know, in the world of Instagram influencing and yoga influencers, like you see people doing all kinds of things in all kinds of places. Um, and I'm trying to be conscious to like educate my community about what's appropriate, and what's inappropriate. So um, an example is I've seen lots of photos and videos of influencers, let's say in the markets in the souks in Marrakesh, Morocco. I do a yoga retreat in Marrakesh, Morocco every year. And I've seen videos and photos, reels, of women in like crop tops and tiny shorts, you know, going through the souks. And that's just not culturally appropriate in Morocco. Um, it's also not safe for women necessarily to walk around that way. So what I try to do is, um, you know, take notes from the culture and really add those into my retreats and add it as a learning opportunity. Um, so for example, my yoga retreat in Morocco, which is one of the most popular ones, Something I learned is that Moroccans love to make things beautiful for the sake of being beautiful. And I've really taken that into my teachings and my retreats. And I'm like, why not have flowers on the table every morning? Why not use your most special cutlery and silverware? There's a, a movie called Sideways. It's an old movie and it's about wine and a wine tour. And in the movie, there's a character who is saving this very, very special bottle of wine for a very special occasion. And he has not yet found the occasion for the bottle of wine. And someone says to him, you don't wait for a special occasion to open a special bottle. The occasion is special because you are opening the bottle. And that's changed my perspective of just this idea of like, make things special. 
make things beautiful, make things ceremonial because it infuses meaning into our lives. And in yoga, we're always looking for ways to infuse more meanings. So definitely the places that I go to inspire the activities that we do, inspire the moments that we create. Another example is uh, a retreat I was in, in Tulum. I was just leading a retreat in Tulum a couple months ago. And Tulum is full of cenotes, these beautiful caves with crystal clear water. They're filled from underground rivers. And I rented a private cenote for my group so that we can have this like beautiful healing experience in the cenote. We also did a traditional Mayan cacao ceremony that was led by Mexicans of indigenous Mayan heritage. And it was just so important to me to bring that in. And this was a, a retreat around the chakras, the yoga chakra system. And I just told them like, hey, this is about the fire chakra today. Can you, you know, somehow infuse elements of X, Y, Z? And they, they really did. They really brought it together. It felt like a very full circle moment. So for sure, the places I, I run the retreats totally influence the experience. I really try to make it culturally relative. I think that's what sets me apart from other yoga retreats is that we're not just coming to a place and doing yoga on a beach in Costa Rica. We're not just coming to Tulum and doing yoga in a fancy villa. You know, I really try to add cultural elements to the experience so that our retreaters feel like they've really traveled and really seen something. I'm very fortunate to have traveled all over the world. I've traveled in every style possible from like sleeping on a park bench. Oh, my parents don't watch this. From like sleeping on a park bench to like hitchhiking and couch surfing to, you know, supreme luxury and everything in between. And what I've learned is that those local experiences are the ones that you remember the most. Um, so definitely the cultural atmosphere influences what I do. And then also I like to make sure that our retreaters are culturally sensitive to where we are. So going back to this thing, I've seen like, you know, influencers, let's say in Marrakesh souks, like, you know, in, in little clothing, you know, that that's not necessarily appropriate. Or I've seen, I've seen yoga girls doing like handstands in the temples in Egypt. And it's just not always appropriate. And, and part of, I feel my job as someone who leads retreats in these places is to learn what's culturally acceptable and educate my yogis so that we make an example of it and we are mindful to the culture. And there's just so much you can learn from different cultures in different places. And so I try my best to be open to our surroundings and and infuse those elements into the retreat and, and ensure that that the yogis that come along are doing that as well. And it, it also just helps us have a really a really harmonious retreat experience. That's that you create very unique experiences. Wow. I love that. That is I do, I do. You know, I hate resorts. <laughs> I hate resorts. I hate resort travel. Um, I hate resorts, I hate resort travel, and I don't like a cookie cutter experience. It's not for me. And so I really feel that when people come on my retreats, it's my responsibility to give them the kind of travel experience that I would want. Every retreat starts with what would my dream vacation in this place be? Who would I want to be surrounded by? How much do I think I can pay for that? Do I want it to be luxury? Do I want it to be rustic? Do I want to have a private driver? Do I want to rent my own motorcycle? Like all these things come into, into play. And yeah, I do really create unique experiences because I like unique travel experiences. And I'm very fortunate. I get a lot of repeat clients on my retreats and they trust me because they know that I'll provide a safe experience, but an authentic one. And it's really cool because I get to like have reunions with people I love all over the world in different places. And they trust me enough to just sign up and say, okay, Lauren, where are we going next? Portugal? Cool. Bali? Cool. Tulum? Great. Um, and that just feels, feels super good. That's amazing. So your, your retreats offer a unique blend of yoga, adventure, and self-discovery. Can you share a memorable moment when one of your retreat participants had a transformative experience that stood out to you? Yes. So, I mean, honestly, every retreat. <laughs> I joke, do you, have you ever seen the movie A League of Their Own about baseball? And Tom Hanks walks into the locker room when all these professional women athletes are, are sitting there and one of them's crying and he says, are you crying? Are you crying? There's no crying in baseball. And I joke like, there's no crying in baseball, but there's a heck of a lot of crying in yoga retreats. <laughs> um, I think I've seen a lot of transformative experience. I've led 44 programs at this point, 44 retreats. Um, if I, I can't think of one thing that, that stands out particularly, but what I can say is 
I've seen a lot of amazing people come out of their shells. I've seen a lot of amazing people break down and cry. And then the next day say, I feel so much lighter. I've seen a lot of people leave seeing like weight off their shoulders. Um, I've graduated yoga students who have completely changed their lives. One, actually, here's one example I can think of. Um, We had one yoga student in particular. She was an engineer. I think she's German. I want to say German uh, from Germany. And she was an engineer. She was completely burnt out, very depressed just really devastated kind of with her life and lifestyle in Germany. And she came on a yoga teacher training just to, to try to heal and to try to get back to herself and try to come back to joy. And she really did. It was really incredible to see over the course of the month of our yoga teacher training, how much her spirit was uplifted after yoga teacher training. She found a job in Sri Lanka and she was in Sri Lanka for two years teaching yoga at a hotel, a yoga and surf hotel. And now she's in India doing another yoga training and when, when I see her on social media, like her posts are just full of joy. And so that's, I guess that's a good example is, you know, this woman completely changed the course of her life. And she went from sort of the typical, this is what I'm supposed to do experience to one of, of just like living out her passions and dreams. That's a fantastic story. I love that. And it's very inspiring too. (laughs) So the journey to becoming an international yoga teacher and establishing your own school is incredibly inspiring, Lauren. Can you you provide guidance for aspiring yoga teachers on how to find their unique voice and niche in this very competitive wellness industry? Totally. I talk about this with my students a lot. I'm actually in the middle of running a yoga teacher training at the moment in Costa Rica. And you can feel really disposable in the yoga world. There's a lot of yoga teachers out there. But you have your own unique voice. You have your own experience and you have your own stories to tell. What I share with my students is to make a theme for your class to help you stand out and speak from your heart and speak from your soul. And if you feel like you're not great with words, use someone else's. Find quotes that inspire you. Use their words. Tell your students, this is a quote from XYZ. Um, This morning, I, I led a class based on this quote from Nelson Mandela saying, don't measure, don't judge my success, sorry, let me try this again one more time. Don't judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I have failed and gotten back up again. And that really stuck with me. I I made a whole class around this and it it really resonates because I recently went through a really tough challenge with work and I got to this point where I was like, I'm just gonna close the yoga school. Like I'm done, I can't can't do this anymore. Every time I try to to move on and do something else and like, or like think about getting a real job, something beckons me back. Like, this is my dharma. This is what I'm supposed to do with my life. hundred percent. I can't get away from it. And I'm, I love it. But yeah, I, I think like finding your unique voice is about just telling your own story and living in your own truth. Something else I tell my students is make your mess, your message. I didn't make that up. Make your mess, your message. So whatever challenges, difficulties, obstacles you had to move through to get to where you are now, your student is the person who was where you once were. And you teach them how to come through that, whatever that challenge or obstacle was. And that that's where your voice is. You know, I teach people how to live their dreams and follow their passions and inspire them to, to take that trip, to, to do the travel thing, to live heart forward, to see the world, even if it's a little bit out of your comfort zone, because that was my journey and that's become my voice. And so I think whatever journey you have been through, your students are the people that are in it currently. Beautiful. So you mentioned the power of meditation in daily life in your interview. Can you share some practical meditation techniques or routines that our readers can incorporate into their wellness journey? Simplest one, stop and take three deep breaths. This is just a simple, the easiest meditation you can do. You're stressed, you're in the middle of the day, you feel totally disconnected. I would say just stop, round your two feet on the earth. If you're sitting, you can sit and lengthen your spine. If you're standing, you just stand up straight, two feet planted on the ground, spine nice and long, shoulders relaxed, close your eyes and just take three very deep breaths slowly and just listen to those breaths and nothing else. You know, sometimes we go through an entire day without taking a deep breath. 
And simple as that, just three deep breaths. It takes 30 seconds. It will immediately calm you, ground you, and, and bring a little bit of peace into your headspace. So true. So breathing is essential when we forget to breathe during the day, especially in stressful moments. Great advice. Thank you, Lauren. And as a leading voice in the world of wellness and yoga, what message or words of wisdom would you like to share with women looking to make positive lifestyle changes and enhance their overall, the overall well-being? Just go for it. Listen to your heart. Trust your intuition. And as Oprah said, fail, fail harder, fail again. You know, you are going to fall. It's going to hurt. We are going to get our hearts broken in life. We are, we are going to have obstacles. We are going to have challenges. You just listen to your heart and follow that desire and it will never lead you astray. And it's really hard sometimes to listen to that little voice of intuition, especially when the whole world gets really loud. But if you get really quiet and you take those three deep breaths, you can kind of know what your heart tells you, where your direction lies, and you just follow it. And again, easier said than done. I think especially women, we we tend to get bogged down in a lot of the expectations around us and we feel the need to take care of everyone. But, you know, I believe that we should live in such a way that our cup is so full, it overflows to fill the cups of others. Rather than taking our cup and slowly emptying it out piece, you know, bit by bit to fill those around us. I really believe like just do what fills up your cup and keep filling that cup more and more and more until you have so much abundance that it overflows and fills up the cup of everyone around you. This was very meaningful, Lauren. Thank you so much for doing this follow-up interview with me. And I wish you only continued success on your great work and all the best to you. Thank you so much. Wanda, thank you so much. Great question. That was amazing. So wonderful to talk to you. I hope the women in your community enjoyed our conversation. I'm sure this will help change lots of lives. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. Thank you so much.